What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news and a handful of updates from Bungie. So in this one, as always, Bungie respond to a bunch of bugs and glitches in the game. They also talk about some changes which are coming up with Revenant, the second episode for Destiny 2, new objectives for Pathfinder, and upcoming bug fixes for Exotics. So we have all of that to talk about as well as the epilogue for episode one. And so there will be a sort of finale or conclusion for episode one that apparently will drop a little bit later on in the episode. Plus there's discussion about a Destiny mobile game. Apparently one is still in development, or at least that's what somewhat reliable sources are saying, so we'll discuss what that means. With a little bit of extra discussion about the future of Destiny, which Bungie say they will be talking more about soon. And of course, the sooner that announcement comes, the better, as Bungie are additionally tackling sentiment issues with the game at the moment. But there's never a dull day when it comes to Bungie news and Destiny, I guess, so we're going to discuss it in the video. I hope this one is useful, and if you enjoy it, a rating really helps us on the channel but now let's get into it. And so first up, some updates from Bungie here. Just a few days back, they spoke about Pathfinder and some changes they have planned for episode two, where they're going to split the Pathfinder cards per activity as far as the ritual ones go. So there'll be Crucible, Gambit, and Strike specific Pathfinders instead of mixed objectives that may take players into each of those different activities. But Bungie further clarify about these and they say each card will have some generic objectives that can be completed in other activities. So they add, if you look closely at the pictures, you can see the non-specific notes in a few spots. So even if you're in the Gambit Pathfinder, for instance, there'll be certain routes that can be taken where objectives could be completed in various activities. So it won't be completely activity specific, but overall it should be an improvement for players who want to complete Pathfinder cards, but want to avoid Crucible or Strikes or whatever it may be. So that's good. And then players also asked, why is Choir of One bugged? And why did it manage to actually launch that way? And as Bungie discussed, there's an issue with ammo reserves, but also it's doing more damage than intended within the Divinity cage. And so D2 team said, speaking with the team, it looks like they attempted to bug fix these before launch, but the fix didn't hold through release. And the devs also feel the frustration of putting out a fancy new toy and having to change it up or communicate those changes just a couple of days after it drops. And so that's why they've decided to leave the weapon and actually put those bug fixes in during episode two, as opposed to fixing it immediately. And on the subject of the ammo issue, they say right now it can be around 400 or more in reserve ammo, but the expected amount of ammo should should be closer to 200. So a couple of justifications there. Again, pretty frustrating that we get something so juicy and it turns out it isn't meant to be that juicy. Just feels like Bungie can't give themselves a win at the minute, but I'll keep you posted when we get further updates about that. On to this week's content though. Of course, there is the next catalyst for the Choir of One. This requires us to open the second secret chest inside of the Encore mission, where there is actually a separate version technically, which unlocks as part of this week's story. But there are also some new collectibles in the Encore mission that we can grab this week. We won't go through all of them in this video, but I'll link a couple of videos down below with the chest locations as well as the collectibles. Another interesting thing that's happened this week though, of course, Bungie gave heavy ammo swords infinite ammo. And of course, that's a pretty fun modifier in general. We can use it in the seasonal activities, Nightfalls and Grandmasters, but it did apply to a weapon which wasn't intended, and that's the 1000 Voices. And so players discovered this at reset, of course, 1k Voices is a totally different type of weapon to a sword, and having infinite ammo is fairly broken. The Destiny 2 team said, 1000 Swords. We may ultimately limit 1000 Voices in Gambit, but outside of that, go and have fun. So I guess the intention for the moment is to let 1000 Voices do this for the remainder of the week alongside the rest of the event. But I'm sure we'll still see plenty of heavy sword use, but for players that have the 1k Voices, I imagine that's probably going to be the go-to for a lot of content for the remainder of the week, as it is pretty broken, and at least it's cool that Bungie haven't taken that off us immediately. So it's something to play around with if you have it. Next up, a couple of final mentions here, and it turns out episode one will actually have an epilogue or a sort of finale phase with a quest and a mission with some specific objectives to sort of wrap up the season. So there's a quest step in the database, spoiler alert here. There's nothing too crazy in terms of spoilers, but this quest is called Epilogue Anomalous Voices, and we need to investigate the temporal anomalies in the mission Encore. And so the first step is actually to head to Europa near Bray Exoscience to investigate an anomaly, and that will lead us on a trek into the Encore mission once again, which will be another one of the variants of Encore, where we'll ultimately find eight anomalies that will obviously trigger that story phase and some kind of 
of conclusion for episode one. So we don't have a ton more details at the moment. And obviously we would get into spoiler territory there anyway, but there will be a finale for Echoes. And I'd imagine that may happen within a couple of weeks after we wrap up act three. So it's something to keep an eye out for before the 8th of October when episode two drops. Another piece of news here and Destiny Bulletin shared that apparently a Destiny mobile game called Destiny Rising is still in development as an insider claims that Bungie and NetEase are working together to develop a project called Destiny Rising. And this is in spite of the fact that Bungie have recently laid off more staff and that projects have been cancelled. And apparently this claim comes from an insider, Kura Cassis, who has a track record of sharing inside information for upcoming video games. And they stated on Twitter that the mobile game project is still very much alive and is titled Destiny Rising, an unannounced mobile game being developed by NetEase and Bungie. And they clarified it has not been cancelled, I can assure you that it's still in development. And of course this isn't the first time that we've heard about a mobile game potentially coming for Destiny. We first heard about it back in around 2022, and it was also corroborated by Bloomberg and Forbes in their recent reporting about the layoffs and cancelled projects at Bungie. As for what that could look like, well, of course it will be a mobile title, so it won't be a fully fleshed out Destiny game. It will however be interesting to see what the sort of connective tissue between the mobile title and the full game might be, and how Bungie handles that announcement if indeed it comes. Of course we've got to take this with a pinch of salt, Bungie haven't confirmed it themselves, but reliable sources are saying that this is still being worked on with the intention of ultimately being released on mobile platforms. So an interesting bit of reporting there, I'll link the full article down below, but let us know, do you think a Destiny mobile game could gauge your interest whatsoever? Obviously there'll be some crossover with the Destiny player base in general, but it also may be a way for Bungie to sort of attempt to reach out to other types of players through this different platform and maybe get them back into the main game and things like that. We'll have to wait and find out, but it is interesting nonetheless. There have also been conversations in the past week or so about Bungie's lack of announcements regarding the future of Destiny. Back in early August, they did say, we will speak to you about the future of Destiny and plans for the next multi-year journey soon, and once we plant a flag for that date, we'll let you know. So Bungie's most recent statement indicates that there is still a multi-year plan for Destiny, that being a key phrase, I suppose. And Cross discussed this in a video recently, saying that following layoffs and the bad news out of Bungie, the fact that we don't know about the future of the game, what Bungie's ultimate plans are, obviously isn't helping sentiment right now. There's a lot of feedback about the current content model in Destiny, and that's sort of one side of the coin, but the other part is that kind of anxiety from players that perhaps there isn't much of a future for Destiny, which obviously doesn't help players to engage right now, right? If you feel like the game is going to wrap up in a year or so, and a lot of the stuff we're doing now won't really be valuable, then obviously that's having a big impact on sentiment as well as the current kind of state of the game and issues that players have. So the sooner Bungie come out and discuss that, the better. It's only been a month since they initially made that statement, so it hasn't been an extremely long period of time and we do know that these things take time but if Bungie want to get on top of community sentiment at the moment and the way that players are feeling about the game and give a sort of more positive outlook for the future it's certainly the case that they need to do it soon and hopefully we will get more of those communications shortly but we'll simply have to wait and find out. Give us your thoughts in the comment section guys but for today that is what we have to discuss so as always if you've enjoyed this video a comment and a rating below is very much appreciated it makes a big difference on the channel. If you want to be kept up to date with Destiny, future content news, updates, and of course the gameplay component, especially as we approach episode 2, then keep it locked and loaded here on the channel, get subbed, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on anything. But otherwise for today, thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you guys very soon.